Oh, bother. <laughs>
So here's my concern, right? Look at this right here. This is the Chieftain Field Team. If you're adding their units, these are units that we're already paying for. Um, not all of them specifically, but most of them are units that you're already paying for. How does this work if you don't have, say, uh, how does how does this work if you want more than this right here? Right? You've got the four different levels of filter. You've got pledged, aligned, committed, and devoted. So at the end of devoted, you get plus one chariots uh, of Nurgle. You get plus one rot knights. You get plus one toe dragon. So are you telling me right now that at the end of this, I only get three chariots, two rot knights, and two toe dragons? Is that how that works? Or that, so that's what's confusing me. Am I going to be locked to this? And if so, then why am I paying for all these units like they're going to be readily available? Um, am I, am I like hemming myself into only being able to have this many units and then my standard roster that I already paid for? That's where I kind of get concerned about this. And I'm hoping that they'll release a video, um, either tomorrow or Friday to kind of explain more about what Tamarkin's chieftains look like. Also, obviously Kazakh's going to be available to you um, as a legendary hero. Are the rest of these heroes, are they lords? Um, are they immortal? Do they move around kind of like the vampire coast where everybody's kind of their own horde? How does that work? I'm really interested to know. Moving on. Let's take it and we'll, we'll shrink this back up a little bit. There we go. We'll shrink this back up a little bit. Um, moving on, we're just going to have, well, we'll, we'll just brush through these really quickly. I'm not going to read the lore on them. Um, if you guys don't know the lore on them, uh, then we can, uh, th then definitely comment down below and I'll adjust for the next video and we'll talk about the lore on each one, but this is going to be Kazakh the Befouled, and we'll just keep on moving through these pictures, really. Um, moving on is going to be the Chaos Lord of Nurgle, and he is looking fantastic. Now, I've seen some people saying, reskin, reskin, reskin. Well, guess what, guys? It is kind of a reskin. <laughs> that's what that's what the uh, the variants are. They're, they're not going to be bloated husks, and that, that, it's just, it's not what it is. That That's how they were made by uh, Games Workshop. It, it is what it is. Now look at this one. This one is really nice. I'm loving it. I'm loving the hood, the mask, the uh, just everything going on here with the chaos sorcerer. Now this is going to be the hero level. Now these are going to be the uh, pestigors, and I think they look really good. I love the hoods on them. Um, I'm just glad that they didn't make them, you know, just green beastmen. That they actually took the time to make them look good because. Honestly, I was very disappointed with the Zinchian, uh, with the Zongors, and with the uh, Cent the Centigors of Zinch. I can't remember what they're actually called right now. The Zonagors? I, I have no idea. Or the 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 Zonta? What? Whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Moving on, we're gonna have the Plague Ogres. Now they're looking good. I have no idea if, if he might be eating a maggot. I have no idea. Uh, could be like a, a burrito, who knows, but he's looking really good. And I think we're going to get two variants of those as well. Um, and then here are the Rot Knights. And I got to say, I wasn't expecting to see like entrails hanging from their, uh, hanging from their underside, but that's really cool. I really like that. Um, they have kind of shied away from that. So I'm really appreciative that they're actually doing that. Um, and these guys coming in with the bile trolls, they're, uh, they're definitely interesting looking. I think they look, I, I think they look better than their model, but not as good as their artwork. Uh, just in my opinion, their, their official artwork, I guess, in my opinion. Um, and that's going way back and I'd have to pull up a picture of them, but I don't have it on hand right now. And then finally, we've got the Toad Dragon itself. That's going to kind of be like the Feral Toad Dragon. Now, let me jump down here because I, I I wonder if they are a mount or not. Um, hmm. 
Doesn't say here. I bet they are. I bet they're a mount. Let's actually take a look at the Toad Dragon. Uh, da, 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 da. The, the update for the Shadows of Change was, uh, was a lot more, um, in my opinion, it was a lot better formatted. This kind of seems like it was just written and then someone inserted pictures. Uh, let's see. It doesn't actually say if they're mounts or not. So guys, let me know if uh, if you guys have found that information, whether or not they are actually mounts. I don't think they are. No, I I, I don't see a mount section. But we'll uh, we'll we'll come back to that another time. Guys, just let me know if you if you know better than I do. Now this is what I'm really excited about here: the Nurgle Legacy update. So, uh, as you know, Nurgle is. It's just not fun to play. It's unfortunate because I've really liked because I like Nurgle. Um, if I was a, <laughs> if I was a you know if I had to pick a Chaos God, um, I would probably pick Nurgle, and that is because of the story of Festus. I've always been the kind of guy who uh, who, who thinks that you know I would I would sacrifice anything everything to you know help the help the people that you know the the people in in need and watching him if you don't know his story he uh he he basically loses against nurgle trying to cure this uh cure this plague and all the bodies in the room sit up and tell him that they'll fi they'll they'll tell him how to fix it if only he submits to nurgle and so he does trying to be a good guy trying to you know thinking that he can he can uh find figure a way out of it you know and when he receives all of the information to cure every disease uh that has ever been created or ever will be created he gets up and he walks out and he doesn't care he doesn't care about it, the reason that he even did it he just he just gives up and that to me is why uh nurgle is so interesting and and why a lot of the falls to chaos are most people who fall to chaos um, aren't just like, the, the, it's not what they wanted. It's what they felt that they had to do. And, you know, it, it makes it more tragic, more cool. Um, anyway, that is taking away from, <laughs> from the point of this, which is going to be that the Nurgle Legacy updates. So, looking at plagues to start with, the entire plague mechanic is getting an upgrade, and I hate to keep doing this, this is really neat. So what happens now is you choose from a web, um, which kind of reminds me of Plague Inc. If you guys have ever played that game, but you you start adding things together and it becomes a plague. Let's go ahead and watch this little short right here. So as you can see, you can put together different items and then you make a plague that way. Um, someone had mentioned you know, does this does this stack? I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping to see an answer on that as well. Like, are you able to run multiple plagues at a time, assuming that you have enough infection, right? Which I I think would be a really good uh, a really good thing to know, uh, because you should you should be able to just make the entire world run rampant with plagues. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be kind of how it is now where it's locked to one or the other. If I'm in Cathay spreading one plague and in the Empire spreading another, I want to know that I can that I can have multiples of them going on, not just uh, not just be locked into one. But that's neither here nor there. Let's continue down. Again, I just think that this is a really good system. I didn't even really think that the plagues needed an update, but uh, Creative Assembly did, and um, well, uh, and, and and good on them. Good on them. I think it looks great. Now, here's what I was worried about, which was going to be cyclical buildings. So the cyclical the cyclical buildings are getting an update, and I'm just going to read what they said here. Um, so, what is the current issue with the system? The well, Nurgle's unique 
cyclical buildings uh, has led to some unique and thematic gameplay strategies when it comes to recruitment. But we felt it had a negative impact on their economy and their defensive capabilities. Duh. So military buildings are still going to be cyclical, um, which is kind of what I had said before. And then the other buildings are going to be static so that you can actually build up your uh, your settlements and have them not just like regurgitating all the time. I think that is fantastic. So military uh, buildings are also now going to cost infections instead of treasury, which again is awesome. You don't have to choose between uh, being able to recruit and being able to uh, to, to build up your cities. Um, they've also done an economy pass to where the buildings, uh, where where the buildings are, you're going to have the ability to actually build up a treasury building rather than having the economy uh, gain split between all the buildings. Because what would happen is you'd have a waning and waxing period. You'd build up these great massive armies and then uh oops now you can't afford them because you went into a waxing period or waning period excuse me so that i mean that's just i, I think that's common sense and i think that uh i i think that that is really good now recruitment i'm kind of split mind on because i think that they did good i think that they made a good decision here um it was pretty close to what i had said but i still think that they need to split it up so let's actually talk about it so what is the issue with the current recruitment system? Uh, Nurgle's unique recruitment is currently too punishing for the benefit of instant recruitment. Yeah, especially compared to the Warriors of Chaos update. So what are we changing? Recruitment costs and recruitment health are now tied to Nurgle corruption, uh, to the Nurgle corruption level and the province that the military force is recruiting in. So um, if you have zero corruption, you're going to recruit them at 30% health and I assume 100% recruitment cost, and at at uh you know at the top tier corruption, 100% corruption, you're going to have 60% health and 50% recruit cost. So I, I I think that works. I don't feel like having to uh, gimp your forces like that still is a good thing. But the minus 50% recruitment cost um, is a big bonus. So I'm not going to knock on that. The only thing that I think they should really do different is, again, split that roster. There are mortal forces and there are demonic forces. Demonic forces should be summoned in, right? Because they're being summoned in from the realms of chaos. The mortal forces are already there. So when you're recruiting them, why would they be at 60% health? That doesn't make any sense. It would make sense if everybody was like that, kind of like in uh, Thrones of Britannia, but it doesn't make sense here because other factions are recruiting their forces very quickly uh, as well, and they're recruiting them at 100% health. Now, they might not be able to recruit a massive army as quickly as Nurgle, but they are able to recruit, uh, you know, they're able to recruit at, like I said, 100% health. So... Uh, if an army pops up on your doorstep and you recruit a bunch of guys at 60% health, well, that's not really going to help you. But again, it's just a personal, that, that's a, that's a me thing. I think that it is a massive improvement. So, you know, uh, three cheers. Moving on to the technology tree. Uh, and a lot of people have talked about this. I have never been able to, uh, sustain a Nurgle campaign long enough to really have to deal with the technology tree, but Nurgle's technology tree is lacking a clear direction and was designed too heavily uh, around Kugoth's Realms of Chaos experience. Yeah, of course it was. So what are they changing? Nurgle's technology tree is now going to be split into two distinct groups, one focused on military and the other on campaign faction bonuses. So they're taking that Chaos Dwarf mechanic or technology tree where they split it up, which is fantastic, by the way, and they are uh, they're they're moving forward, and I can almost guarantee that the Empire and Dwarfs are going to have a similar situation. So, the layout has also been reworked to make it clearer and easier to progress through the technology tree. Thank you, Creative Assembly. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to play a new Nurgle campaign when this starts. So, army abilities. What were the issues with the current systems? Previously, Nurgle gained army abilities based on the amount of damage taken. We felt that this didn't uh, 
reward Nurgle players enough and seemed like a consolation prize for losing units. That's good. <laughs> that, that seems pretty spot on. Um, the only people who should, uh, well, you know, I don't think anybody should really take, uh, should really get bonuses for losing a battle. Um, I believe the Dark Elves get it for all deaths. Greenskins get it for uh, deaths of enemies. And um, it should probably be like that. It should probably be like, you know, no matter how many people die, uh, Nurgle's happy about it. But I don't know. Uh, Nurgle now gains passive income of army ability points for every enemy unit in the battle map that is currently being effective or affected by a negative effect or debuff. Now that is cool and thematic. Uh, this plays into Nurgle's playstyle of spreading debuffs and contact effects uh, and makes him even more desirable for both campaign and battles. Fantastic. So that's really going to be it for the Nurgle changes. They do talk a little bit about what's up next. So next week, it's going to be the Empire and Elspeth von Draken. And then the following week, it's going to be Malachi McKyson. And uh, the, <laughs> the week after that, they're going to be wrapping up their reveals um and delving into the free additional content that is arriving in 5.0 so here's what i'm thinking okay i'm thinking that we're going to be looking at uh a second of may release date now i know thrones a delay right but i think that when things were pushed back a week in february for the release of uh 4.2 that it pushed unfortunately tamarkan back another week as well um that is just part of it i don't think that uh, an, another week is going to really kill us and honestly instead of coming out the, sa the same exact week as uh as manor lords it might buy creative assembly a little bit of breathing room i'm not saying that manor lords is a direct competitor but it is a direct competitor for uh for for that for for you know for the wallet right um it doesn't do what uh total war does exactly but if you're having to choose one or the other and you've only got you know you've only got 40 bucks and you have to choose manor lord or uh or <laughs> or you know uh, a dlc for a game that's uh, been a little bit on the rocks you might choose manor lord so Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to come out the 2nd of May, and we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Now, that being said, I do want to talk to you guys before we go a little bit about what I'm planning for this month. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do uh, showcases where I show off the different legendary lords coming in the, uh, coming in the DLC because I don't have that kind of access. But what I am thinking about is doing some uh, doing some let's plays of some mm, let's call them free LCs the uh, <laughs> the the un uh, the unofficial free LCs that I used to do back in uh, well October through December I'm thinking about making a few of those that way for those people who either can't or do not wish to purchase the DLC well maybe we've got some maybe we got some free LC options here for you. Uh, that that you could enjoy instead but i will talk to you more about what that schedule looks like in our next video till then to all my friends wherever you are good morning good evening and good night i'll catch you later